Hello, traders. This is Brad Gibble with the Daily Market Insight for Monday, the 29th of November. All right. Now, as we recover from the uh, Friday or Thursday, Friday's news, the you know the announcement that the Omicron, the new uh, variant of the COVID virus, is is out and about, put a bit of a shockwave through the markets. Um, now, the easiest way to show you this is like the, the safe havens really kicked into gear. Just going to the charts, you can see the Swiss. Oh, that's the wrong picture. Uh, Swiss right down. Um, or sort of, well, it's rallying. That's a dollar falling against the Swiss and the yen, right? So yen and Swiss, bit of a rush towards those things. Now, the situation is with that Swiss appreciating so quickly, it's pushed euro up above the trend line, right? And taken out stops. So if anything, it's a bit of a recharge because I don't know, if we're just going to try and gauge how long the immediate, you know, knee jerk reaction is from Omicron. By all reports from everything I've read, the symptoms are a bit of muscle soreness and tiredness for two days, right? So it's not a big deal as much as the media would like you to think. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But Euro rallying sort of just popped sterling up with it. Right, they are joined at the hip, those two geographically. Uh, Aussie and Kiwi sort of felt the, the brunt, right? A bit of a risk off situation. Um, the uh, so yen yeah, rallies, Aussie and Kiwi fall, dollar cat also fell a bit. Uh, oil back at 71 bucks. I mean, it's taken a while, but it's it's finally got there, and uh, now we've got a little bit of confusion, right? So, overall, the dollar is still cruising to the top side. But we've got some disruption here, and it's this geopolitical situations that we don't like at all, right? Now, I was short Aussie uh, through this process and, and cashed in with the benefit of that going with my position. A little bit lucky, if anything. But, you know, the fact is going with the trend is, is your friend. That's, that's the way to it. So if anything comes out that goes with it, it probably gets a bit of a bigger move than what you would otherwise expect. Now, so the million dollar question here is like, what, what do we do here now? What, what's, the, what's the play? Like the two safe havens, right? They've, they've hit some lows, they're coming back. So they haven't exactly sort of retraced all the way back because we don't know enough about the Omicron strain at this point. Um, and that's going to disrupt things, I'd say, for the next day or two. And until we get all the markets to reconnect, we see where everything's at and then we go from there, right? So... To me, it was a clear situation where we had a dollar, nice dollar trend where it continues. This is potentially disrupting the whole move itself. So what, what are we going to do? Well, it's the start of the week. And not only that, in a day or so, a couple of days, we've got the start of the month, right? So you want to start having a look through this because you know at the start of the month, first Friday of the month, non-farm payrolls out of the US, right? So, but the, the good thing is, the US plan is in play, it's out in the open, everything's fitting in nicely. So it's not going to be as dramatic as it usually or has been over the past six to 12 months, because it's now more of a cross check. Okay, is everything in line with the payrolls, as opposed to the payrolls giving us the, the timeline for the plan, right? We're coming back to normal fundamentals. But in amongst that, you want to have a look through here and just pick off the, uh, the key components to where momentum may come in and out of the market. Don't forget, we're overlaying this with the um, all the chit chatter about the Omicron uh, strain and all those sorts of things. So Monday, I can't see a terrible lot happening across the board on Monday itself, right? The uh, Euro consumer confidence numbers, if anything, I, I like the look of those. Now, they aren't a, a big number by any stretch, but in this global environment of consumer confidence, economic sentiment, they do pack a little bit of a punch. Uh, inflation numbers out of Germany. Well, we know in Germany holds up Europe. So that's probably something to look at. Um, it's very rare that you get a big change in the inflation rate, right? So just, just if there is some sort of variance and the consensus is for plus, you know, up half percent uh, to 5%, that's something that would be uh, Euro positive. So let's just see how that plays out, but I'm not holding my breath. The, uh, you come down, into the North American session. Now we've got uh, Treasury Secretary uh, Janet Yellen speaking. And we've also through the week, we've got uh, Powell uh, speaking as well. And uh, his uh, testimony on the Wednesday as well, worth having a look at. I'm not really big on the Chinese data at this point, but once again, the flash inflation rates out of the Eurozone on Tuesday, definitely uh, got to be on your radar. 
especially, you know, Euro's just out of kilter at the moment with the latest sort of flash panic from the Omicron strain. So we, we, I would expect the Euro to continue to fall, right? But this, this is where the data comes in, has a, a bit of a say on it. Wednesday or Tuesday as well, North American session GDP numbers out of Canada. Normally we'd be throffing at these at the moment. Nah, it's a little bit here and there. The S&P K Shiller home numbers, good numbers uh, historically. I've always liked those as they always sort of generally give you a good strong uh, movement in the, in the market. There's that testimony from uh, Powell on uh, Tuesday. Then um, as you come through the week, there's a few other things here and there, the GDP growth rate in Australia. I don't know, excuse me. <clears throat> I don't know if they're, um... uh, excuse me. All right, that's best felt like I just, uh... That's why I didn't say, but let's not hope not. Uh, anyway, back to this. So the Asian data, well, I guess it's going to come into play for the Aussie, the Chinese. We'll wait to see how that sort of really plays out. Uh, then there's all these peripheral numbers, which aren't bad to look at. But as I said, with the geopolitical situation around the Omicron, it may be overshadowed, like the nationwide housing prices, you know, steady numbers, the ECB non-monetary policy meetings. We have seen the, some releases from that uh, those non-monetary policy meetings impact right something to be aware of um, but uh, you know as we as you get through the week the new services will start to focus on the non-farm payrolls on Friday so keep an eye on that and um, so the numbers here on trading economics they're, they're high impacting ones are the uh, ones with the time highlighted there's there's dribs and drabs right retail sales I like that as a, as a number for the Aussie uh, Yellen's speaking there again. So with Yellen and, and uh, Powell talking a couple of times through the week, and you've also got Christine Lagarde uh, on Friday as well, you know, there's potential for disruption to the normal price action, normal trends, right? So that's, that's what I can see when I see those things. And obviously, this is the key event Friday. You've got the Canadian numbers and the US uh, numbers all coming out at the same time. It's a, uh, a bit of a calamity. The, the PMI numbers and the, and the ISM on manufacturing sort of coming out 45 minutes later. Um, so well, like an hour and 15 minutes later, I should say. The, uh, so that's, that's, that's where you could separate that. But, you know, it is every second month where the US data and the uh, Canadian numbers come out at once. It's a bit of a calamity, especially if you're trying to trade dollar CAD. Uh, and what we're looking for is these consensus numbers to fit into line and a bit of a cross check, right? If there was some, now, from, from now, now the US has got a plan, it's in play, the numbers have to be really terrible or exceptionally strong to change the plan. Right? I can't see it happening just at the moment, but you know what? If the uh, outcome from the, this Omicron uh, news comes out and it, it starts to build and escalate and turns into a, another massive global lockdown, well, you know what? This could see the Fed unwind a few things, slow everything up. It puts everything into question. As I said at the moment, it doesn't look like it's, it's going to be a massive thing. I did read in like uh, some of the global newspapers, like they're just terrible. Like they're coming out with like the worst ever strain, you're all going to die and all this sort of stuff. When in actual fact, the person who found it just came out and said, well, the symptoms are tiredness and maybe sore muscles for two days. So anyway, we're going to see how that plays out. It's, it's, it's going to take a couple of days for the media to th throw all the garbage on the fire and then we can see where it settles uh, and see how it plays out because, it, I mean, it's our worst case scenario coming into December because we did have a nice US dollar trend. Uh, everything's in our favour. We've got no hardly any geopolitical crap. And then all of a sudden, uh, this opens Pandora's box again. So depending on where you are, focus on the pairs where there are bits and pieces coming out. Understand not all these data releases are the same, right? On the wrong screen for you, not helpful. Um, so pick out the ones which are a little bit, you know, have logic to them, like the consumer sentiment numbers. Um, and then we can sort of piece it together as we go through the week. I'll be obviously giving you coverage through the week and we'll see how it goes. But there are, are some good numbers coming out. Um, across the board, some good US numbers. It's obviously non-farm payroll week. That's usually the major focus as we get through it. We've got uh, a huge amount of um, 
uh, high uh, officials, important officials, I should say, speaking, uh, Bank of England Governor Bailey speaking uh, on Wednesday and et cetera, et cetera. So loads to think about. My, my, I suggest my plan for you would be get uh, your charts uh, up to speed, right? Get these uh, things, work out where the key levels are, um, find out what makes sense and what doesn't and what could change. If this is reversed and like they go, you know what, the Omicron thing's okay, then we might see some reversal, reversals of those positions. That's where Swiss and Yen could come into play. Um, but I, I can't see it from everything we've had in the past. I can't see these events sort of just coming and dying off in a week. Uh, it doesn't work for the media. You know, they love to sort of build up a bit of tension and fear. So we'll have, just have to wait and play it out from here. All right, guys, all the best. Disruption ahead. Hopefully it's only short lived. Then we can get back to uh, trading that dollar trend if it can kick back into gear. All right, guys, have a good one. Cheerio.